Welcome to Basic Healthcare Information Security. Maybe. The objectives of this chapter, Chapter 7, are defining the information security as it relates to healthcare, describing computer technology protections, listing and describing the different elements of physical security, and explaining how security can protect data and different types of data backups. And as we mentioned, information security is frequently used to describe tasks of securing information in this digital format. And so there are many different ways that information is um, secured. So a little bit more about information security. We've got physical security. So first we can talk a little bit about the environment and this can be the physical location of where these items related to information security reside. So if we first talk back about information security in the paper world, so in health information management, you're going to have paper records. And although we're all moving to electronic health records and electronic medical records, there are still going to be some forms of paper, some forms of other digital media or collected data that may be stored on other, um, in other formats. So in the paper world, we have medical records locked down. You have to have um, secure badges or passcodes. The physicians have to have secure passcodes in order to actually access the physical room where those charts were that they needed to sign. In the digital world, um, we've got the, the different data centers, switch closets, the physical places where the hardware that helps to transmit and collect that data reside. And so if you remember in some of our earlier conversations, we talked about um, the challenges back in some of those first lectures with the physical building and structures, concrete walls, lead walls, um, underground, where water pipes are going, the uh, um, ability to pull or not to pull data cables because the walls are concrete or made out of lead or because they run under pipes, sewer, where old bathrooms used to be, all kinds of environmental issues. And those are all things to consider when you are building a data center or considering a remodel is where do you put those physical devices so that they are easily accessible, but hidden away and locked up tight and not in the path of water where they have good power supplies, ventilation, fire suppression, all of those things need to be considered. Video surveillance is another form of security. So when we talk about physical securities and, and how you can actually get into an area, we also have the video surveillance and it can start with that. Is somebody trying to get in? Who are the people that were outside the room when something happened? Who are all the people that walked by? We've all watched episodes of 24 or the following um, other government movies, Enemy of the State where the video surveillance, they're using Cisco systems and traffic light cameras and things to help identify the faces of criminals, very much the same way with all the video surveillance. And at Community, we have several cameras um, around the hospital for all kinds of video surveillance in the ER, in our maternity areas uh, to protect our patients and ourselves. But we also have um, video surveillance specifically for the data center. HVAC. So when we talk about environment, we also need to consider the cooling and the fire suppression. And currently, our data center has an end to um, for cooling where the primary cooling is coming from water that's supplied to the facility. But if that incoming water temperature gets below a certain degrees or, or um, above a certain degree, then the chiller on the roof 
of our emergency department automatically fails over to a secondary system. And if both options one and two fail or the incoming water is too warm, then they have a third option to manually push cold water from the city directly to the equipment. Um, that manual failover requires somebody to actually be on site. We have halon and fire suppression as well for um, these services. And I've got some pictures coming up. Proximity badges and key codes. So how can you actually physically get in these rooms? And the data center MDF and the access closets or the IDF have keyed doors. Some of them do have badge accesses. Then, then again, if we go back to those cameras with that badge access, there are cameras on both doors that enter the rooms. And along with the HVAC, there is fire suppression walls and we have a three hour rated fire firewalls on all of our data centers and closets. Each rack in the data, data center is additionally locked and the aisles are also locked. So even if you get in the room, you can't physically get at our devices without a little bit of effort. And Nick, this gives time, hopefully, for somebody to um, actually be able to get in and stop the perpetrator, if that were the case. And then we talk a little bit about power. Um, the data center is an N1 and the facility is an N2. So first with the facility, the data center is fed off emergency power. It has its own detective transfer switch that controls input feeds to the data center. And the switch is fed by normal power and two generator backups. So these generators also supply the rest of the hospital for emergency power. They are diesel powered, and I've got pictures of this, with a 100 gallon underground tank. And as an example, just a couple weeks ago, Northwest Energy had a transformer go out and we failed over to the first generator the system was intelligent enough to realize that that was not enough power, and so then the, the second generator kicked on. The data center is fed by both street and emergency power, but if both fail, the data center has two power zones. So in addition to these generators, it's how the, the zones are actually split. Power A and B that feed each of the equipment racks, and in an outage, if both generators on our UPS can hold the system for about 15 minutes before we need to start deciding which servers we need to set, shut down. And we have less than four minutes um, that our facility crew is able to get those generators up and running. So it's a um, pretty, pretty good system. I've actually been there when the power's gone out and you hardly even notice. So here's some pictures of our chiller pumps, and thanks to our one of our networking engineers, um, Ryan Dunn, we've got some pictures to show you. So these are our chiller pumps for the data center, our cooling unit, one of our big battery backups, one of the UPSs, our transfer switch, And then the big generator, one of the generators for the whole hospital that's fed off that 100 gallon diesel tank. So then we get into computer and data security. So we've, we've done some physical things with where the data center resides. And of course I didn't talk, we're remote hosted with the Cerner Corporation. So their facility and I, is super duper secret, it's like NORAD, um, underground, guys in SWAT uniforms stand around all day with guns. That's how they, they talk about it. I've actually never seen it, haven't taken the tour. Um, but when we talk about the computer data security, obviously we can't lock everybody's computers up like we do the data center. They wouldn't be able to do their job. So how are we locking up the computers and the data security? So the first level is passwords to the actual network. And we have two kinds of passwords. We have passwords, um, network access that requires a manager or director to request that a person have even access to our network. And by that, I mean, if you're an employee of the hospital, there are some applications or some areas of the hospital that you can access a computer without a network login if you were, for instance, a student 
We don't expect you to have access to our whole network in order to do a couple days or a couple weeks um, interning around the hospital, either as a student nurse or pharmacist or something of that nature. The next level of passwords comes at those individual applications. And the network password is required to expire. Every 90 days you have to rotate it and you can't use the same password that you use for the past three passwords. So it does force you to rotate. Your application passwords, some of them are set to expire depending on the application, some of them are not. It depends on if the application can be accessed in an area where we have um, easel, easy network access. A lot of the public areas, areas where they're doing patient care at the bedside, those may have different types of applications where you, your passwords expire. If it's non-patient information or applications where you have to use your network password in order to actually get on the system, the password may not be set to expire because we've got the front doors locked so we don't need to lock the screen door, for instance. Once you get in with your password, it's the level of permissions that you get. Where can you go? What can you see? Shared folders, um, levels of access within the, the actual applications. So for instance, a registration clerk doesn't need to read a patient's chart, so they have access to the registration information when they access our Cerner electronic medical record or health record, but they do not have access to read through documents or different areas of the patient's chart. So they, there's a network level of security, where they can go, what they can see, what applications you can access once you get on the network, then at the application level, we can control what you can see and what you can do within that application. We have our um, antivirus software is McAfee that gets regular updates. We have portals and VPNs as another way to access our network, but again, it requires special authentication and either a token, a VPN, a separate login in order to get to that information. And then we have data backups. Now, because we're remote hosted, Cerner Corporation takes care of the backups. In some, in the days before Cerner, we did have tape backups. We had um, backups that would take snapshots. Generally, every 24 hours, a snapshot was taken with a full backup to tape and a snapshot taken um, on a weekly basis. Any one of those could be restored. And again, we're talking somewhat about other types of personal media, and unfortunately, community has not yet put into place um, removed thumb drive capability on laptops or computers or removed disk drives. There's this fine balance be between what people need access to to do their job or be able to do their job. Um, learning materials used to come on DVDs and things versus inappropriate use of flash drives and that opportunity to introduce viruses into the system. We discourage it, but we haven't locked down the computers so that you couldn't use them yet. Another form of security that we use in the hospital is our hard drive drill. And I actually tried to get a little video for you, but it didn't turn out very well. The big thing in the center down here, right here, you put your hard drive in, shut the door, press the button, and like those sound effects. It actually crushes and puts a big hole and crushes the hard drive so that the pins are touching nothing else that will work on it. Pretty fine machine and it sure built, beats the hand drill that we used to use. So the end result is information security. You guys have some um, experience with it and we've defined it. Some of the technology protections, antivirus software, password protections, you read about the length of passwords, um, different elements of physical security. We've got locks on doors, video surveillance, locking the actual server cabinets, um, and, and how that security protects the data so that you can't get at it. So we have redundancies and backups and multiple ways to protect the data itself. Um, one of the things we didn't talk about a little bit with the computer security protecting data is the automatic notifications the network engineers have that are sent to their phones or their pagers 
regarding any time they get certain kind of SPID errors or um, sector failures and things like that, they automatically will get notified if any of those things stop so that they have time to migrate data or redistribute things as they need to. And then the different types of data backups, whether it's hardware, hard, hard filed on DVDs or whether um, tapes or being backed up by our remote hosted, and I honestly can't tell you how they back up at Cerner. Um, those are all the different types of computer security. Um, so please take a look at your next discussion forum and this will be our last week coming up and then we'll have our final. Your final will be based on all of the previous questions. So if you study your prior exams, vocab, and um, any uh, review question, quizzes we've taken, you'll be in great shape for the final. Thanks.